when this all started or just came up that this um, was going to be part of this, but we've always had a volunteer chief and department, great people on the department doing <coughs> an amazing job. I think that we have to look at the cost and like, um, you know, the expense, and it's not just this 110, I mean, now I think I just heard that now it's going to be a car that we'll be maintaining every year. I just think that it's probably going to come to this that we're going to need a chief, but I don't feel that just all of a sudden appropriating this and making it a continual thing without looking into it further. I mean, I just don't think that there's enough data for that, so I definitely don't approve. Thank you. Uh, there was a motion to move the question. If you're in favor of voting on the question, signify by saying aye. Aye. If you'd like to talk some more, say no. Okay, so we're going to move to the question. Article 21 is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of creating the position of full-time fire chief using grade 13 on the town employee salary scale and hiring a person to fill this position. This appropriation represents a partial year's wages and benefits, including participation in the New Hampshire retirement system. If approved, this position will become part of the operating budget in ensuing years. These monies will come from general taxation. So you remember your instructions. You probably have an orange ballot. Circle yes if you're in favor of Article 21. No if you're against it. Please come up and cast your ballots.
trouble. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation for our RSA 32-7 from the 6 and will not lapse until the project is completed uh, or by December 31, 2023, whichever is sooner. Uh, all in favor of 23, as I've read it, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Article 23 passes. Article 24 is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of repairing current out of surface water holes, service water holes, monies to come from general taxation or take any other action relating thereto. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 3276 and will not lapse until the project is completed or by December 31, 
2023, whichever is sooner. No, this requires a majority vote and is recommended by the select board and the budget committee. May I have a motion? The move. And a second. Yep. Second. Article 24 has been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? There's 50,000. Okay. Uh, article 24, to see if the town would vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of repairing current out of surface water holes. These monies to come from general taxation. This will be a non lasting appropriation per RSA 3276 and will not last until the project is completed or by December 31, 2023. All in favor of Article 24 as I read it, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Article 24 has passed. Results of Article 21, the vote was 51 no, 62 yes. That means Article 21 passed. Okay. Article 25, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,275 for the purpose of preparing a space and needs study for the highway department garage building needs. These monies to come from general taxation or take any other action you may be there too. Uh, this is the usual majority vote required and recommended by the select board and the budget committee that have a motion. So moved. And a second. Article 25 has been moved and seconded. <laughs> is there discussion? So the purpose of this ward article is to fund a study. Um, when someone told me that we need 10 grand to figure out where to put our uh, new highway garage, I was kind of uh, concerned and confused because it would be pretty simple to do so until I sat down and talked to people um, like Don and engineers and whatnot and what this is all about. Um, we're going to talk about a capital improvement plan, but the money is to um, work to find a piece of land, to work with an engineer and an architect and basically design what this building will be. And that's what that money is about. I was initially confused and concerned that just that $10,000 to try to figure out where we're going to put this. But it's a lot more than that. Um, we're going to talk about this building here uh, very shortly. Further discussion on Article 25. For the question? Okay. Article 25 is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,275 for the purpose of preparing a space and needs study for the highway department garage building needs. These are monies that would come from general taxation. All in favor of Article 25, as I read it, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. Article 25 passes. Article 26. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $64,725 to be placed in the Public Works Garage Capital Reserve Fund previously established. These monies are to come from general taxation, or to take any other action you're waiting there too. You got it. It's a majority vote required and recommended by the select board and the budget committee. May I have a motion? The move. May I have a second? Yes. Article 26 has been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Ready? Yes, sir. Uh, looking back at 25 and saying it's called the highway department garage, and uh, is this the same thing, public works garage now? Is that the same? Yeah, yes. The same building. Well, it's the same building. Is there any problem if we put some money in one and want to use it in the other? The two different things. Right. So one's a capital reserve and one was a specific allocation to a specific I just project. Want, I'm just 
just want to make sure it doesn't come up to a stop because we didn't cross a T or dot an I. Yeah, so the capital reserve fund was previously created, so that was the name we gave it when we created it. So the two things are the, for the same purpose, but one is a study fund, you know, it's going to pay for a study, and the other is a savings account, basically, for the future building of, uh, uh, of a new garage when and if we decide that it's time to do that. There's $151,000.09 currently in that capital reserve account. I, I might bring it up because I you know, want somebody to be aware of it. I, I think we already had one of those about 10 or 15 years back. <coughs> yes, sir. Dan Ross, Wilson Road. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I have property tax fatigue. And while it might, this might be a savings account for the town, we're paying for it. So it's coming out of my pocket. You don't, you don't start making car payments two years before you buy the car. You might save it, but we're, we, the town's people, are making the payments just as if it already exists. So, I say, wait until we know more about what we're buying before we start blindly pumping money. The purpose of a, uh, the purpose of a CIP capital improvement plan is to <laughs> the purpose of a CIP is to even out the impact of these major projects to any one particular year, and they're uh, identified up front of what the capital needs are, and we make investments in those accounts accordingly um, to stabilize the tax rate. Dan Ross again. That's exactly, you made my point. It's like, if we had to pay for it all at once, we'd realize the true expense of it. Yes. Maybe we would think differently about it. But what this does, is this just kind of slow leaks us until we're committed. <coughs> I don't like that. Further discussion? Ready for the question? <coughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Article 26, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $64,725 to be placed in the Public Works Garage Capital Reserve Fund previously established. These monies have come from general taxation. All in favor of Article 26, as I just read it to you, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Aye. The ayes have it. Article 26 passes. Article 27 is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $31,000 to be placed in the Cruiser Replacement Capital Reserve Fund previously established for the purpose of purchasing a new police cruiser and associated equipment. These monies are to come from general taxation. Take any other action relating there too. Usual majority vote and recommended by both the select board and the budget committee. I have a motion. So moved. I have a second. Yes. Would anyone like to discuss Article 27? Oh. How much is in that fund already? How much is in the we know how much is in the fund? Page 51 is the trust report of the trustees of the trust funds. <coughs> and if this is the police. Page 53 has the current value. Page 28,986. What? Page 28. Yes. Over at the top of the page. Uh, Police Department capital <coughs> cruiser replacement fund approximate balance of September of 2019 is $28,986. So this 
So really brief, uh, the last uh, vehicle we bought, in the, the 2017 vehicle was a, uh, a Chevy, and it was the last one made in the world. It was actually made in, in Australia. Uh, and we were lucky to get it because it matched the other vehicles we've had in the past, and so we were able to move the, the equipment, the lights and so forth, from that, from an older vehicle into this one. Uh, now we're going to, when we buy new vehicles, they have to be something else because no one's making Chevy Caprices anymore. So uh, we'll have to buy, in addition to the vehicle, lights and, and uh, all the other things that go into a police vehicle. And the police can tell you more about what that is than me, but I think it's clear that it's more than just the cost of the car. Further discussion. I heard a question out there, what does a police car cost? Can everybody hear me? Uh, the, the car that we purchased this year that we're actually waiting for, uh, the Florida London area, came out to be about $33,000. The upfit for the car, because we have absolutely no equipment for this car at all, equates to about $11,000 to $12,000. So you're looking at about $47,000 to outfit a brand new car. We cannot use any equipment of anything that we have in the Chevy Caprice because it obviously doesn't fit into a Ford Interceptor. This doesn't match. So everything that we're doing now, uh, moving forward, we're staying with the same line of the Ford Interceptors. Um, when we get to the point where we start replacing the cars, we can then add the equipment in there, but in this instance, uh, we can't do that. Thank you. Is there further discussion on Article 27? You ready for the question? Article 27 is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $31,000 to be placed in the Cruiser Replacement Capital Reserve Fund previously, previously established for the purpose of purchasing a new police cruiser and associated equipment. These monies are to come from general taxation. All uh, in favor of Article 27, as I just read it to you, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. Article 27 passed. <laughs> Article 28 is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 120, 129, $120,900 for the purpose of purchasing a sidewalk tractor and associated equipment and to authorize the withdrawal of up to $120,900 from that highway equipment capital reserve fund created for that purpose. We'll take any other action relating there too. So the usual majority vote and recommended by the select board of the budget committee. May I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. Second. Would anyone like to talk about Article 28? The question always comes up, why is this thing so damn expensive and so small? And the reason is it's a very specialized piece of equipment. This is a, a sidewalk tractor that every municipality has. Um, it is specialized in the sense that it has to be four feet or narrower to plow our sidewalk, sand the sidewalk, sweep the sidewalks. It does a couple other things such as ball field maintenance and whatnot. It's very expensive, it is. People think that, oh, I can get out a Chapel tractor and buy a $30,000 machine that is similar in size. That may be true that it's similar in size, but it's nowhere near in the function. Um, unfortunately, we need this machine, and unfortunately, they're very expensive. Um, our town relies on the sidewalks for the safety of our citizens at our downtown, and there is no other machine that does what this one does that we can buy for 30 grand a chapel track. 
Dan Ross Wilson Road. Okay, so this is not expensive. It has a zero tax impact, right? Yeah, see this makes my point about the reserve fund. We shove money into this fund, we pay, and then, oh, let's get a sidewalk tractor for $121,000. It's like, it's free, and it's like, you've already paid the money for it, so, you know, the impact at that time is free, but you, you still paid for it. Do we really need this? What do we use now? I've seen a sidewalk tractor in use here for years. Um, as the select woman said, our town is shrinking. Why do we keep spending all this money? It's like, we are working toward this inevitable collision with property taxes getting to the point where we can't live here anymore. Can't live here, can't afford to move. And I think that we just really need to sober up on the spending and maybe put it off for a year. Think about it. But you can't run your personal finances like this. So far, while I've been marking down all of these articles, every one has passed. So, uh, Personally, if each of these articles pass tonight, it's a $1,000 a year tax bump for my house. My house is not that expensive. $519,000 is the assessed value. It's just not sustainable. <coughs> Ralph Bushman, Sand Hill Road. I just have a question to put the need of this uh, piece of equipment in uh, context. How, how many miles of uh, sidewalk do we actually have? <laughs> I mean, is it half a mile? Uh, 38 miles? I guess it's somewhere probably on the floor. <laughs> so nobody from the DPW is here tonight to answer that question. However, so, Brian, would you like to speak to that question? <laughs> Reluctantly? And, and can you also tell them the condition of the current uh, sidewalk track? The previous three years we spent between six and five thousand dollars fixing us each year. So and it's up to you people if you want to keep dumping that kind of money into it. Um, it's not only used for sidewalks, we also use it in the summit to mow the ball field at Carnival Hill. We also use it to sweep the side of the roads and we also use it for shouldering the side of the roads also after they're paid. Uh, so it's not just a sidewalk tractor, it's more of a multi-function machine. And I'm not, I don't know exactly how many miles of sidewalk there are, but the downtown area is pretty much all sidewalks. Thank you. <coughs> Chris Cotton, Maple Street. This piece of equipment should be bought just simply for the fact that when it snows tonight, your kids walk on the sidewalk tomorrow morning, not in the road. Okay. Further discussion on 28. Ready for the question? Article 28 is to see if the town of Boteray is appropriate the sum of $120,900 for the purpose of purchasing a sidewalk tractor and associated equipment, and to authorize a withdrawal of up to $120,900 from the Highway Equipment Capital Reserve Fund created for that purpose. <coughs> All in favor of Article 28, as I've read it to you, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Nay. Article 28 passed. Article 29. Yes to see if the town would vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 for 
for the purpose of purchasing stone and gravel to be placed on the unpaved roads of the town of Welton. These monies have come from general taxation or to take any other action relating thereto. The usual uh, majority votes required to select and recommend this article. The budget committee does not recommend this article. Now I have a motion. So move. I have a second. Thank you. Was there discussion on Article 29? Deb more tweet on um, Badger Friend Road. Um, I just would like to um, ask the audience, um, how many of you were at the school district meeting on Saturday? Raise your hand, please. So we um, made a really difficult decision um, in front of our school board and school budget committee. And um, we, we dropped their budget by $400,000. And um, I think this is transparency um, by showing how much we are gonna set aside for this. But um, we haven't voted anything down tonight, including my $100 stipend. And, and I think, um, I, I, because there are parents here, um, I, I'm not able to support this. So um, I've been working with, with uh, Brian Adams on this. We, anyone that's been to the select board meetings last year was the first time that we had a, a proper mud season in 10 or 15 years in Oakland. And last year was a proper mud season, as you all can remember, any of us that live on dirt roads, I happen to live on a dirt road. And we had a lot of complaints. We had some roads that were impassable. We had roads that people had legitimate concerns about life safety, ambulance, fire trucks getting there. We had people threaten the town with legal action. And this warrant article was put forward uh, to the voters so you can make the decision as opposed to the select board inserting $30,000 into the operating budget, us just doing it. And what this is about is adding crushed stone and locally available uh, round stone coming from screening processes to our dirt roads to basically um, rehabilitate them during the annual process of regrading and reshaping these roads. There is uh, $17,300 $17, in our impact fees for roads. Impact fees is the uh, cost that's charged to a new development, new house, new commercial structure. Um, of which a portion of it goes to the road. So there's $17,300 there. And the town of Wilton has a large stockpile of crushed material. We bring back all of the excavated rock and tar and whatnot from projects and we have a big pile, we bring in a crusher and we crush it all up. So we have an enormous pile of that as well. So what we want to do is make an affordable fix to our roads. We live in a town that has a lot of gravel pits. You guys are probably all aware of that. And there is affordable local stone, anywhere between five and six and six dollars ninety cents a ton, which is cheap for crushed stone, round stone. So the plan was is that we would take the thirty thousand dollars plus seventeen three for your total value of forty seven three hundred plus the pile that we have and make a major improvement. Um, to our gravel roads. There's 12 miles out of the 56 in town that are gravel roads. Um, last year during mud season we made, we probably put down, I don't know, 30 grand, 20 grand in stone anyways. And what happens when you put stone onto a road where it's mud just, just pushes right in. If you want to, on heel roads uh, anytime since last year, the road crew did the entire road. They put six inches of uh, inch and a half round stone and then worked it into the road base during the normal course of gradient. It was a significant upgrade. Mm -hmm. If you look at our uh, resurfacing budget, it's somewhere around $380,000 and that buys us very little road. It, we maybe do, I don't know, two or three, four miles per year, if that. Even at that schedule, it's unsustainable. Our roads and bridges are our most costly portion of town infrastructure, and in my opinion, this $30,000 is a significant upgrade to a large section of our roads at a very affordable price compared to what we pay for tar. People, we had people that threatened us with legal action, they want us to tar the road, there's a big hubbub at the select board meeting about that. 
People have no idea what it takes to rebuild a road. It's not just simply laying down tar. There's design standards, te telemetry, there's drainage, there's all things that go into that, and it's over a million dollars a mile. We are never, ever going to tar these gravel roads in Wilton. There's been one tar road in Wilton that I can remember that was Isaac Fry Highway from the Four Corners Farm down, and that was done with impact fees, off-site improvement fees, from the 14-lot subdivision that was done at, at the farm, the Four Corners Farm. That's the only road that's ever been tarred. And after we did that, everyone complained that people go going way too fast and it's a racetrack. <laughs> so this, this money, in my opinion, is, is money well spent. It will get us approximately one-third, maybe more, uh, distance of our, of, of our roads. And, and again, keep in mind, we're not rebuilding these gravel roads. We are, well, we are, but we're, we're adding a stone during the normal course of grading. So it's not that much more work since we're doing that anyways. We have affordable stone, we have a large pile, and that $17,300, we have to spend that anyways. There's a sunset provision on the impact fees where that money has to go back to the developers if we do not use it. $17,300 will get you a lot more gravel road rebuild than it certainly would with tar. That gets you about 37 feet. <laughs> Joking, but it doesn't, it doesn't go far at all. So that's the purpose of this, and the reason that the select board brought this forward is a response to the citizens because we had a lot of complaints from people on dirt roads. We had a lot of complaints. And we're just here to show you that we're listening, and we think this is an important decision for you guys to make as opposed to us inserting 30 grand into the budget and doing it anyways. So. Right, so this, this brings up another issue. We're not gonna, um, we're not going to get into whose road gets rebuilt first. It's the same thing with the tar basis. There's a plan. We'll have the road crew um, review the priority of roads and which ones are in immediate need. So there's, there's definitely um, a rationale behind that. And we're not going to politicize, even from our board, about whose road's going to get done first. <coughs> Chris Scott on Maple Street. So let me get this straight. If we don't vote this in, and we have mud season next year, we're not repairing the roads? No, we are. So we would have but we ain't gonna get the money. That's a good point. We'd be moving some around to make sure it would help you So, shouldn't money. that money be in the highway budget? The, the question was... Is it it has money. always been in the highway budget. Right. So, answer my question. The, the point here if is we that, vote this down, Next spring, when we have mud season, are we fixing the roads? The, the point here is to do some extra work, some one-time extra work that hopefully will last a while, that it won't all just get just pushed into the mud. So the director of public works can't figure out what he needs to do to put in his budget? This was a response to citizens' complaints. And if, instead of us putting a line item in there, we decided we'd let them the voters decided they think this is a good idea. I don't think the voters should would, should have to make that choice. I think the voters want their mud road fixed. I agree with you that it should have been put in the budget, and I was it was explained to me by the majority of the board that they wanted to put the additional cost for extra stone out to the on a warrant article. There is money in the budget for the roads to be fixed. This is extra money, or money to be set aside for extra repair roads. Does that make sense? Still, that was an answer to my question. So, so take the uh, Peel Road, for example. There were sections of Peel. There were sections. Is there money in the highway budget? There is. There were sections. I have to refer to the budget. Man, there were sections. And woman, ladies. So the point is, you look at Hill Road. Hill Road was a mess last year. There were portions of it that uh, could have been. And it will be again next year, and it will be again the year after that, and the year after that. And you're going to come in here and ask for well, well, the point is, the point is, Chris, if, we, if we put down 2,200 uh, yards of stone. Matthew, per, Matthew, you're not telling me anything. Chris, I know Chris, all would, you like, would you let Matt finish, and then I'll give you a little bit more time? So the point of this is to make a capital improvement into our gravel roads. As you well know, you know better than I do, that we can take a, a gravel road and put stone on some of the muddy seas, on the muddy portions, and we'll get by, right? But we all know that some of these roads, there's very little avenue. It's basically dirt and street sweepings and subgrade and whatnot. Look at um, 
Stagecoach Road, for example, they grabbed that last year in response to it. Captain Clark uh, Road, we had a huge problem with. So this is to make a rebuild of our gravel roads, which from what I understand has never occurred. No one's taken a, one entire gravel road other than Hume Road and lay down a significant amount of aggregate and basically up, upgrade that road. So that's what the purpose of this warrant article is. And if people don't think it's a good idea, they shouldn't vote for it. I think we're waiting on the number and how we go. So, so in 2019, we budgeted $12,500 for sandstone and gravel. Um, we actually spent $22,595, so that some of that money came from elsewhere in the highway budget. But that's still a lot less than, than what. So that's what I'm getting at. Shouldn't should the director be aware of that problem and make the adjustment in his budget? I don't see why we're wasting time on an article when it has to be done regardless. So let, let's vote. <laughs> well, we got, we got, I, 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 I hear, I'll, I'll take that as a move the question, move the question but I'll keep it in mind. Sure. Can you keep your comments as brief as possible? Come on up. We won't bite you. <laughs> Bill Abrams, the Matty, uh, Barrett's Health. Um, my understanding here is that we're trying to get ahead of the game so that next year we don't have to increase that highway budget to fix the road because it's not going to be as bad we just spent 50 grand to fix water holes all right i have no use for a water hole i live up the dirt road there is no fire hydrants up my dirt road i'm understanding the water hole properly uh, on the other hand a year or two ago and several years before that i couldn't get out of my road because of the road Fire truck couldn't get into my house if it had to. Fire, ambulance, nothing. Um, so I think getting ahead of the game and actually spending a little bit of money here to, uh, you know, to upgrade roads is worth the effort. Okay, thank you. And Joe Coffee, Stagecoach Road. So we continue to hit our heads on the low doorstop and make the same mistake every year, continuing to fix the roads and get money again. Or we can get smart and try some things that are different. Adding some stone, making the maintenance cheaper in the future, this might be a good investment. I support this. Thank you. Thank you. The questions have been moved. Are you ready to vote? Yes? Yes. yes. Anyone who wants to keep talking? Why was why the budget committee didn't recommend it? Would you, like, would you like to tell us, can you be brief? Oh, I'll be very brief. <laughs> um, I was one of the members of the budget committee that voted against this for a lot of the reasons that have already been brought up. This should have been part of the operating budget because I think what this does, it creates a false expectation. If I lived on a dirt road in town, I would expect that 30000 based on that warrant article, is going to fix my road. And as we've already seen, at best it'll fix a third of the roads in town. It should be part of the normal operating budget, as there's already money in there now. I think this sets a false expectation. And again, if this gets voted down, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It just means they're going to get the money from somewhere else. So I think this warrant article is a waste. It should have been part of the operating budget, and it creates a false expectation for people to live on dirt roads in town. Thank you. Article 29, to see if the vote town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 for the purpose of purchasing stolen <laughs> gravel to be placed on the unpaved roads of the town of Wilton. These monies would come from general taxation. All in favor of Article 29, as I read it to you, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. Hey. Can I, let's have a show of hands. All the ayes, put your hands up. Thank you. All the nays, put your hands up. Uh, it's passed. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. Bill has chosen to recuse himself for this warrant article. Number 30 to see if the town will vote pursuant to RSA 4111A to authorize the select board to lease town-owned property located at Webb Road and Route 101 
and further identified as town tax map E23 for longer than one year to Quinn Brothers Corporation, heretofore known as Quinn, and to further authorize the continued operation of Quinn's gravel operation at the property, subject to Quinn obtaining and or maintaining all necessary excavation permits and other required <coughs> approvals, and further subject to the taxation authority of the town for non-governmental use of governmental land pursuant to RSA 7223, and such other terms determined by the select board to be in the best interest of the town, and to authorize the select board to take any action necessary to carry out this vote. Do I have a motion? So motion. It's moved by Tom. Second. I have a second. Do we have any discussion? Permit would like to speak to the article. Thank you, Madam Moderator. So, I'm opposed to this article for several reasons. But the most important one is that it leaves all of you in the dark. There's no information in this article that lets you know how this lease would work or if there's a benefit to the town. There was more detail in the first article we voted on where the town got free money from the state for storm sewer management. So let's say we had an article that said, the selectmen are authorized to buy a truck and raise taxes for that purpose. Would you vote for that? I doubt it. Tonight I heard lots of questions about lots of articles. <clears throat> you would want to know what the truck was going to cost, what department it was for, why we needed it, and more. We could spend a million dollars on a truck. We spent 120000 on a, on a sidewalk truck. You're the legislative body for this town. You should have complete information about a proposal before at voting to approve it. The problem is, those decisions haven't been made. If this article passes, the board would have broad authority to lease the land without any other input from the public. The lease can be for many years, and the cost to the Quinns minimal. At this point, we just don't know, and you're asked to approve this plan blindly. There is a proposal the town has received that can give you an indication of what the final lease might look like. That proposal calls for a 20-year lease. That would mean that Quinn would have control of the town property until 2040. What it doesn't call for is any payment. That would mean that Quinn would pay nothing but the property taxes for those 20 years. Let me tell you something about property taxes that you might not know. State law compels the town to require the payment of property taxes when it leases property to a private interest. So that would need to be in the lease in any case. Other than that, there's no compensation for the town. And let me remind you about something about property taxes you probably already know. The town doesn't get to keep most of the property tax we collect. The town's share is only 27%. The rest goes to the school, and a little bit of it goes to the county. So the town's main benefit from this lease is 27% of the property tax that we would be required to collect anyway. The only other benefit in this proposal deals with the adjacent piece of land which Quinn owns. The town would have an option to purchase that adjoining property. When the Quins are done with it, Quins are mining gravel from that property as well, for the total amount of property tax collected over the 20 years. And again, you only get to keep 27% of that, so it would still involve money from the town's pocket. So this is where the issue gets complicated. Others will probably argue tonight that we must own this piece of land because our water system wells are across Route 31 from the gravel pit, and owning it would protect those wells. If that was the case, we should have owned those wells, or that land, since 1986, when the wells were first drilled. If we can wait until 2040, when gravel is removed from that land using heavy, heavy machinery over 54 years, the concern of owning that land to protect the aquifer is really minimal. 
That property is in the town's aquifer protection district, which puts strong limitations on what could be done with that land as the state law. By 2040, all the gravel that can legally be removed will be gone. The property will likely be effectively worthless, since no industrial use would fit all those restrictions. Even building houses would likely be prohibited because digging foundations would get too close to the water table. So the town buying that land would be doing the Quins a favor, not the other way around. Meanwhile, a gas truck could roll over on Route 31 and pollute that aquifer regardless of who owns the land. So the best way to protect the water system is to drill wells in another part of town for a second source. And the Water Commission is actively working on that project. So this all sounds like a great deal for Quinn, doesn't it? Wouldn't you like a deal like that? A nice piece of property that you can make money on for 20 years, free of charge, only paying property tax that you would be required to pay anyway? And then at the end, the town pays you all that property tax back to take over a piece of land that you probably couldn't sell otherwise. I'm concerned that other businesses would sue the town over creating a sweetheart deal that unduly benefits one company without offering the same opportunity to others. So finally, I haven't addressed the issue of having gravel pits in the first place. Now we know the world needs gravel. We just voted for the town to buy gravel in this previous article. But the world's gravel doesn't all have to come from Wilton. We often talk about maintaining the rural character of our town. Well, anyone who has seen this gravel pit knows it more closely resembles the mountains of the moon. The main argument for the recent asphalt plant proposal was that Twin couldn't sell enough gravel from that other gravel pit at a different location in town to make enough money, so they wanted to make asphalt from it. And we have other operators digging gravel in Wilton. So whether you're in favor of gravel pits or not, voting this down will not affect the world's supply of gravel. So I'm sorry this is such a long comment, but there's a lot you need to know before you vote. I hope you will join me in voting no on this article, and not approve a proposal that would have much benefit for an out-of-town company and little benefit for Wilton. Thank you. Um, sorry, we have a slide. We want to do the presentation yeah, I, first. I'm afraid I don't have anything to say for or against the proposal. I just want to point out that the our, uh, article appears to be incorrect. It refers to property at Web Road and Route 101. It, I believe it's in fact at Web Road and Route 31. Yes, sir. Yes. Correct. Oops. So, so we have a slide. I'm going to ask uh, Tom Schultz, the Wilton uh, Waterworks chairman, to come up and, and join me, and we're going to present this. Um, I will say that Kermit was very vague, and he has his own opinion because he doesn't like it. And if I had a little Oscar, I would give it to you for your performance. It was very good. <laughs> now, the, the purpose of this, uh, this was a lease that started in 2004. Um, that none of us here were, were part of this. And this is a, a map of the aquifer in Wilton, the stratified drift aquifer. And you can see that the very large area that's in dark color in the, the center part is, is the greatest transmission, transmission is a term about where you can uh, locate uh, a municipal well. And there's another slide. And lot F-173 is the only uh, large left industrial lot that is both on the stratified drift aquifer where our town wells are, as well as the wellhead protection area and the wellhead recharge area. Those are two different terms. Wellhead recharge area is where the water falls onto the earth, infiltrates in and goes to the well. Wellhead protection area also includes areas that have uh, topographical changes in water that may flow to that. So that was my finger on my iPad going over the uh, contour line, the property line of that. Next slide. This is the wellhead 
protection area that was mapped by Emery and Garrett, our water condition experts, and you can see the two circles are the 400 foot sanitary protection zone for the two wells. One's the Abbott well and the other one's the Everett well. And um, the red outline, as, as again, I was kind of crude with my finger, but that is the outline of lot F-173. The outline in the green is the uh, town-owned lot, which is E-23, and it's owned by the town of Wilton. And the giant yellow area is the wellhead protection area. Um, this is different from the uh, well had recharge area and it's different from the aquifer overlay district but as you can see it's a very important uh, piece of land a very important area very sensitive now uh, the purpose of this in 2004 the wilton water commission and the select board um, and none of us were on that none of the water commission by the way kermit's a water commissioner too um, none of us were here so none of us started this whole thing but somehow the town thought it was a good idea that they would lease lot E23 for gravel operations for a payment of $590,000. That money has now grown to $755,000. I'm not a Wilton Water Commissioner, but the rationale of them not purchasing the land was that they'd rather take the money and drill two new additional wells or an additional well somewhere else to diversify their risk to the water system. And personally, I think that makes perfect sense. Quinn's lease ran out and they said, okay, uh, let's figure this out, we want to go forward. If you remember last year, there was a warrant article that was approved that asked for the town to essentially do the same thing. Give the select board the ability to negotiate with the Quinn's to figure out a long-term proposal. The proposal always was, since then and now, that the town would own lot F-173. We got the money, they didn't take the gravel in time. So, now here they are and they said, well, let us continue the lease and we'll give you that land. Um, that's where it is. The land is assessed at $320,000 and 700 bucks. It's 34.7 acres, um, all of which are in the industrial district, the aquifer protection district, the wellhead protection area, and the wellhead recharge area. So there's a lot of overlays there, but essentially the land is directly on top of the most important part of our aquifer. Would have I started a gravel lease on that? I probably wouldn't, but they did, and that was in 2004. And now the question before the town is, do we want to continue letting them mine the gravel that we already got paid for, have the money, and it's grown to close to $800,000? The word article is to give the select board the permission to continue to negotiate. Over the last year, it took forever between their lawyer and our lawyer and, and contracts and dot the I's, cross the T's. Every time it went to loyal, there was another question. Kermit had questions. It lengthened the process, so we never got the deal. The deal is they will give us the land. They will pay the property taxes. At the end of the deal, we buy the land for the property taxes. So we get lot F-173. It's simple. It's true. It's there. That's the value of the land. The question before the voter is, do we want to get a large piece of land that's contiguous with town-owned land and remove an industrial lot from being potentially developed and affecting our municipal water supply? I don't have town water. I don't have any skin in the game. But to me, this is a very good idea. This is a very good idea. Um, other potential benefits of this is that we own lot E23. We have an additional piece of land. Anyone that's been out there can see that it's a gravel operation. It's a gravel pit. But look forward to the future. It's not going to be 20 years. That's the length of the term. I actually thought it was 15. But say that it's done in 10 years and it's reclaimed. If anyone's been out there, it's a gigantic open area where you cannot see any houses, any cars, anything. It's enormous. Possibilities include a solar array. People said the energy committee thought that may be a good idea to have a solar array on town on property. I think that's a great idea. That's exactly what the town of Milford is doing with their industrial land, the Brock's property. If we did not continue this use, when you look at when you look at the land it is now, it has a big hill on it, right? And when they were supposed to be done with it, it was going to be flat. If we do not continue the lease, it will not be flat, and you will not have a flat area for a solar array. So that's something that people may want to think about. The other potential option that we've been bantering around is potential, you know, I talked about how we, we need somehow 10 grand to figure out where to put our new town barn. This is an industrial land with a gigantic two-lane road that's tarred and has a fueling pad. It may be a good idea. Obviously, we wouldn't put our salt barn there, but 
Potential use. And then also as recreation. We would have a gigantic area that people could use for either whatever, ball fields, snowmobiling, sledding, whatever it may be. But the fact of the matter is, we would own the land, it would be contiguous, and um, the next action would be to continue the negotiations with Quinn Corp, and then we would have a public hearing to say that if we wanted to take this land. When we structure the deal, this is obviously going to be a contract that says either give us X money or B land. We want the land. But this is something that's been going on for a very long time. Um, yes, this board article is just that. It's asking permission so we can continue to negotiate in the best interest of our town and acquire a piece of property that is valuable to protect our water quality. And um, when it comes time to get the land, if we were authorized to do so, we would take into consideration any public comment that people may have. It would be an open and transparent process. This has been going on for a very, very long time. People may be fatigued about talking about it because this is probably the third or fourth time it's come up at a uh, town meeting in the last 15 years. So I'm gonna pass it over to Tom Schultz. So if anybody missed it the first three times, I'm Tom Schultz, I'm the Wilton Water Commission's chairman currently, and um, I serve with Mr. Williams, and Frank Edenwood, who is unfortunately not able to be here, our New Hampshire State Education Secretary. Uh, and to Matt's point, this has been going on for some time, the original agreement that was made in 2004, as he mentioned, Quinn's paid the town of Wilton almost $600,000, $590,000, for the gravel rights on a piece of town property. That money was put in a capital reserve fund because it was originally designated to buy the land back. And as of the end of the year, its value was at $755,000. So the town has accumulated three quarters of a million dollars off of selling this gravel. So it wasn't a case of the Quinns getting it for nothing. So we had the choice or we had the option to buy this property for a price of between $350,000 and $450,000 at the end of the 15-year agreement. The Water Commission decided not to because we got greedy because we had all this money and we didn't really feel like giving it back to them. And we had a better idea, which was what Mr. Williams mentioned was we're going to use that money to develop another wellhead because we are vulnerable. We have two wellheads on the same piece of road and they could both get polluted fairly quickly. So that's what that money is going to be used.